Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video on my channel, Hair Literacy. If you guys are new, please make sure to subscribe so that you guys are updated for hair loss and hair transplant topics, as well as updates on current hair loss treatments in the pipelines. Visit my website at hairliteracy.com to purchase your microneedling device, which is scientifically proven to stimulate hair growth. My low-level ACE therapy cap, DH debucking shampoo and serum, hair growth vitamins, and a few other products for those who are suffering from hair loss. If you guys are also interested in getting a hair transplant, uh, take a look at Motion Clinic in South Korea. I had two FUE procedures there, and you guys can see that I had phenomenal results. They do give out free consultations, so I'm going to have all of their contact information in the description box below for those who are interested. Now, in today's video, I wanted to discuss the topic of finasteride. Specifically, I wanted to talk about something known as the nocebo effect and how it can affect finasteride users and those who are considering taking finasteride in an adverse way. If you guys have been following my hair loss journey for the past few years now, if you guys have been watching my YouTube videos, you probably are aware that I am a strong advocate when it comes to using finasteride for treating androgenic alopecia. It's been available in the US market since 1992 for treating um, benign prostate hyperplasia, which is for enlarged prostates. And then in 1998, finasteride was approved for treating genetic hair loss. Over the past few decades, there's been multiple studies and extensive research um, on its efficacy in stopping hair loss at the optimal dose of one milligram a day with nearly 65 to 70% scalp and serum DHT inhibition. It has a well-established excellent safety profile with long-term studies that even confirm efficacy even after 10 plus years of usage with no serious side effects. There's no other FDA approved hair loss drug that has gone through extensive research like finasteride has. And while there are other hair loss treatments that have been purportedly able to be efficacious like the experimental anti-androgen RU5841, they don't come close to the research and money that was spent on finasteride. I've been taking finasteride about four years now since uh, 2016 after my uh, first hair transplant back in uh, November 2016 and I actually had no adverse side effects. I used to take one milligram daily, but I cut it back to 0.5 milligram a day since there are multiple studies that show negligible DHT inhibition between two dosages and you get to save money since typically, you know, a one month supply of finasteride now becomes a two month supply. Anyway, the nocebo effect is something that really hasn't been discussed as much as it should, especially knowing that finasteride can be such a controversial topic due to the reported side effects. So the nocebo effect is the inverse of the placebo effect, and it refers to a non-pharmacological or undesirable side effects after active or inactive therapy. These adverse events can dramatically you know, increase once a person is informed about the potential side effects of the treatment. So maybe you go in for a consultation at your doctor's clinic and he or she informs you of potential side effects. Or maybe you're lurking online, you come across, you know, different posts from, you know, various hair loss forms about guys having all these symptoms after taking finasteride. Um, in the case of finasteride, most users suffering from hair loss are usually aware of the notorious potentially sexual side effects including things like erectile dysfunction, a low libido, and even neurological side effects including cognitive impairment, you know, migraines, depression. Um, I think the important thing to note is not to downplay the existence of people claiming to have side effects from finasteride, you know, whether or not it's caused by the nocebo effect. I think it's also important to note that individuals with post finasteride syndrome do present with very distinctive and relatively homogeneous symptoms. But it's also equally important to look at how the nocebo effect can affect finasteride users. So there was actually a 2007 study titled finasteride 5 milligram and sexual side effects. How many of these are related to the nocebo phenomenon? This was actually a study that was a randomized controlled trial consisting of 120 patients with a clinical diagnosis of benign prostate hyperplasia. So they were given five milligram of finasteride and it was broken down into two groups. Group one, they did not get counseling on the drug sexual side effects while the second group was informed of potential side effects uh, from finasteride. The phrase that they actually used was that it may cause erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, problems of ejaculation, but that these problems are uncommon. The estimation of side effects was conducted at the six and 12 month mark using the male sexual function questionnaire, as well as a self-administered questionnaire. And out of the 120 patients, 107 of them were able to complete the study. And group two, the group that was informed of the sexual side effects reported a significantly higher proportion of one or more sexual side effects as compared to group one. 
So to give you guys some numbers, it was actually 43.6% from group two versus only 15.3% from group one of the side effects. So almost three times the reported side effects from the group that was informed of finasteride side effects. The incidence of ED, decreased libido, and ejaculation disorders were 9.6, 7.7, and 5.7% for group one, whereas 30.9, 23.6, and 16% for group two, respectively. So the study kind of sheds light on the fact that blind administration of finasteride was a associated with a significantly higher proportion of sexual dysfunction and patients were informed on sexual side effects compared to those in which the same information was omitted. And this just doesn't apply to finasteride. There are other studies on other treatment drugs, both clinical and in research settings, such as uh, you know beta blockers, for instance, where patients were told that they might experience sexual side effects after treatment, uh, report these symptoms between three and four times more often than patients in a control group who were not informed about these symptoms. This nocebo effect has also been reported in neurological diseases such as depression, uh, you know, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis. And in this chart here, you can see the significant differences. So these studies indicate and confirm that disclosing a potential uh, adverse event is going to significantly increase the likelihood of such an event occurring. There's plenty of studies that have looked at the problem of side effects caused by finasteride. Most of them reveal that sexual adverse side effects occur at rates under five to 7% and that many of these adverse side effects are similar to that of placebo and that studies that do seem to have documented contrary findings oftentimes have limitations uh, to the study, such as you know having a small number of patients, selection bias, or even studies without serum hormone analysis. I think the important thing here to note from this is that every drug does come with uh, side effects, including finasteride. Now, a drug like finasteride that alters the hormonal profile of a patient can cause various side effects, uh, including sexual dysfunction, but as the evidence shown from the nocebo effect, patients need to adopt a broader perspective and not be narrowed by fear-mongering individuals who try to demonize finasteride. Unfortunately, you guys all know that there hasn't really been any advancement in terms of hair loss treatments. And currently the only FDA approved medication that's been around for the past two decades is minoxidil and finasteride in the US. Finasteride does work in the majority of users in stopping hair loss. And if you guys really do want to be proactive and slow the progression of hair loss with a medication that's been through rigorous studies, finasteride is one of the best lines of defense against hair loss. Facts show that most users are not going to have any adverse side effects and those that do are able to reverse it once they stop taking the medication. And that's the same reason why sometimes I don't like lurking on hair loss forums and subreddit posts like Trustless um, on topics pertaining to finasteride because there's so many people who are just fear mongers and haters that try to drag others down. Now when it comes to hair loss, we all know that time is of the essence and the more that you delay treatment, the more that you guys are going to continue to lose hair. So my advice is to not waste any time. If you guys really don't want to be bald, get on proven treatment or you just have to accept baldness. Uh, there really is no option at this point. You know, go through a day without having to read a post from somebody about how finasteride destroyed their life. Um, and uh, started getting these side effects after just one day of taking it. And then they become, you know, like these newest members of the anti finasteride movement and create an account on post finasteride syndrome only to end up returning to these helpful hair loss forms years later, except for the thing now is that they're well advanced in terms of the hair loss in Nord 5 and they're ready to give finasteride a try. Uh, they could have halted or slowed down their hair loss when they were, you know, in Nord 3. But now with further hair loss, they're thinking that they can go back to a number two, which just doesn't make sense. So at the end of the day, you know, there's millions of patients who have benefited from taking finasteride with no side effects at all or minimal and reversible side effects. So we have to realize that its effects are proven. It's one of the best available to treat androgenic alopecia as well as multiple studies that have shown a safety over long duration of administration. It's obviously important for any patient to consult with the doctor prior to taking finasteride and even having a good baseline blood work done. Uh, people who are still apprehensive about the sides can also consider administering a lower dosage with even just 0.2 milligram a day, which can still suppress a negligible amount of both scalp and serum DH levels or even look into something like a topical version of finasteride, which can be just as uh, efficacious. And finally, you know, the nocebo effect really shows the power behind words. It's oftentimes a double-edged sword that has the ability to heal and help, but also to harm. 
And I think one needs to be careful in the selection of words they portray since it can have, you know, obviously a huge impact on just so many levels. So hope this video has been informative on the nocebo effect. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you guys have any financial related questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks for watching guys. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Take care.